Hello, coffee lover. Pop Copy back with another segment of Coffee Truth, where we look at inaccuracies and myths about what coffee really is. So, my basis really for this whole knowledge and understanding about coffee has to do with its link to human consciousness. I believe coffee is a very important uh, sister in helping our brains work better. Our brains function better when we have a cup of coffee and they function better when we have a really good cup of coffee. In my opinion, what is a really good cup of coffee? It's a coffee that has been fresh roasted, that has more active chemicals and ingredients that affect our brain. Now the mainstream just talks about caffeine and how caffeine affects the brain in these ways, but I don't believe it can only be caffeine because otherwise a caffeinated soft drink or another caffeinated beverage would have a similar effect and it does not. People always are searching for a good cup of coffee. And coffee, in fact, is a psychoactive drug. If this is the definition of a psychoactive drug, that's what coffee is. And again, it's beyond caffeine. Now, the scientists and the mainstream want to say it's only caffeine. But like I just said, if you compare it to caffeinated drinks, it doesn't compare. And the early users of coffee and the early discoverers of coffee were the monks. And these were people who were devoted to their consciousness. They meditated all day long. And when they discovered this incredible uh, resources over a thousand years ago of coffee, they were using it in their meditations to stay awake and they were attaining levels of consciousness that they weren't able to obtain without it. So the reason I believe that it's not just about caffeine is through my experience and discoveries as a coffee roaster. So it is said, I haven't proved this, but it is said that uh, there are almost 1,500 different chemical compounds that are created during the roasting process. That's during the roasting of the green coffee into the roasted coffee. And when I say alive, people misunderstand me. I'm talking about those chemicals that are active immediately after roasting. They're active, they're alive. Of course, the bean isn't alive. It can't be a seed. It can't become a tree because you roasted it at uh, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I understand that. I realize that. But when I'm talking about liveliness, I'm talking about potency. I'm talking about these chemicals and drugs that are created during the roasting process. 1,500 of them. I mean, it's an amazing number. Now, I can't confirm that number. I don't have a laboratory. So i um, taking several sources and their word for it. Let's just say it's half that or a thousand chemicals. It's still quite a bit. Now, what I've noticed with the coffee roasting is that, uh, and this is what they say, is that in the first 24 hours, 40% of the CO2 that's created has left the porous coffee bean as a gas. 40% in 24 hours, with the rest leaving, in my estimation, in another six days. So after about a week, seven days, I say the bean has died. That just means these chemical co compounds that were created during the roasting process have left the bean. It's like it's breathed out all this gas and now the porous bean is open to oxidation. Oxygen can come in and kill and harm the uh, rest of the coffee bean. That's why people vacuum pack. And the way they vacuum pack is they use a one-way seal to allow these gases to escape. My theory, my understanding is that these gases are what we want to take in because they affect the brain in positive ways. I can tell a big difference hour by hour when I compare, and I've done these tests extensively for years, comparing coffee just after it's been roasted uh, to coffee one day old, two days old, three days old, and then I went in two hours. Coffee 10 hours after roasting, 20 hours after roasting, 30 hours after roasting. More recently, I went into, I, I took it back to right after roasting. And what I found each time that the aliveness, the potency, the taste of the coffee, when I compared it, the closer it was to roasting, the more alive, the more active 
ingredients, chemicals, substances there were. And that's the stuff that I think affect the brain in very positive ways. Again, if it was only caffeine, it wouldn't matter if it was a caffeinated uh, beverage or coffee. But there's something about coffee that has these extra elements. I believe it's in the form of gases and other substances that affect the brain and affect the body in positive ways. And what I've noticed is that just everybody who I have come in contact with and I have shown, we have tested, we have taste tested, uh, can tell the difference. It's not so much in the taste, it's in the feeling, it's in the aliveness. It just seems to have an extra added energy lift to it when it's the closest to roasting as possible. So these studies need to be uh, continued, and I encourage uh, people, if they've never tried just roasted coffee, to roast at home yourself. It is really very important. That's when you will get the most out of it. And these monks, how are they having the, their coffee? They weren't roasting it and saving it for another day. They're, it's the Ethiopian coffee ceremony. I did a video about that earlier. Roast, grind, and brew in that order. With today's equipment, it's possible to do it. It's economical and affordable to do it, and it will give you the best coffee possible. So I encourage you to try it out for yourself. I'm only giving you my point of view. And like any good truther, do your, I say do your own research. It's very important that you find this out for yourself and prove it to yourself um, to make sure that what I'm saying is right. But most people aren't talking about this because they are devoted to the mainstream. They're in the coffee business and they've been for decades and they actually uh, think that uh, there's nothing to it. But the people who try it themselves, who have experienced it, home roasters, they're the ones that know. Okay, that's it. Coffee and consciousness. It's a very powerful link. When you have fresh roasted coffee, you will be in a much better mood. You will be uplifted. You will be clear headed and your day in that sense will go much better. All right, coffee lovers. This is Pot Coffee. See you again.